Very, very grateful to be joined in WLIWFM Studio 51 by the one and only Kim Tetro. Hey there. And Captain Dave Burson. Don't you chortle at me like that, Captain. We know that you are the captain of the first U.S. Coast Guard approved all electric boat. So, really paving the way for, I mean, a future that we're all seeing as far as. climate change, stemming the tide of climate change, sort of moving forward through this climate crisis. You said 25 years you've been the captain of Glory Going Green, or almost? Well, first of all, Gianna, thank you for having us. We never leave the North Fork, really. So to come to Southampton is really, it's eye-opening and quite a joy. So Kim and I are appreciative that we didn't have to file for a visa to get here to cross the canal we'll be allowed to leave yes and we appreciate that (laughs) as for glory it is we are entering our 24th year it is the only solar charged electric powered boat sub chapter t for those mariners out there certified by the united states coast guard to carry up to 12 passengers and we've been operating it's an old elco it's a reproduction of a boat built for the columbian exposition of 1893 uh, the book to read concerning that is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I love and, this guy. And um, Glory, um, Glory is just one of those objects like this beautiful guitar here that just keeps on giving. You had to get a new battery, but you, you went, what, 11 years? On no, that? I went, I went, I went, I we try to use those little jumping bunny batteries, you know, thousands of them on the boat, the little bunny batteries that they advertise on TV, but they didn't work. So we had to actually go to a, a, a very sophisticated battery uh, that are called absorbed glass mat batteries that have a very long life, usually only five years, but because we just baby glory so much uh, and the batteries that we've got 11 years out of our batteries. Beautiful. With electric power, people are always concerned about the battery life. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I've never had, in 23 years, we've never had a battery problem. Of course, my pacemaker has gone out <laughs> periodically, but the boat always runs. That's, 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 a, that's a Dave thing. It's, you know, it's just your heart can't, be contained inside of the mortal coil. There you go. Very good. <laughs> you know? Write that down. Very so, good. Very Captain, good. I mean, it, it's tough because you don't want to do a call to action, but if you visit the East End and the North Fork and you're looking for a guide, uh, I mean, I can't think of a better guy to, to shuttle you around uh, the waters out in Greenport than you. You're, you have Glory Going Green is right in Preston's Dock, right? Can you talk a little bit about what you do uh, in the summer surfing? Primarily, Gianna, here's the program. Even though there are a lot of people living on the North Fork and a lot of children, people seem to think that everybody that lives on the North Fork has a boat or access to a boat. In my experience in Greenport, I have tried to turn Glory into the village boat because there are many, many children living in that community who don't have access to the waterfront who don't have access to being on a boat, right. who don't get to wear the captain's hat and say things like Helms Lee or anything like that. They don't get to they don't get to get that squinty look. So I try to avail my boat always in the community, primarily now, especially as I've gotten older or gotten older or am older, to let the kids get on the boat for free. Aww. I do a lot of community work yes, with the you library. Do. And with because the kids. I want the kids. The kids come through the library. They're usually summer kids. A, a lot of them are Greenport kids. Uh, they're part of the rec center. They're part of the library program that Vicki runs at the Floyd Memorial Library. And we sign them up and do two or three trips a year. We work with the South Hall Library. And we get the kids on the boat. Glory travels at the fastest speed, maybe five knots, which is a six and a quarter nautical miles per hour. Uh, the kids get to ha- handle the wheel. The bay usually during the week is so beautiful and empty. Mm. So except for running into like Orca, there's Have nothing really? we could hit. 
Have you run into it? There's no orcas. That no, are. that's that's true. I'm I'm just imagining. It. Okay. I'm thinking we, of a movie. Do we ever get uh, dolphins visiting us in the bay? Not only have we had pods of dolphins swimming between Greenport and Shelter Island, but we've also seen some minke whales. Huh. Right. Now, there was recently a, a case a of a whale sprite. that passed away, right, but right I've seen Bruce whales Creek. that have been, I guess ambulatory is not the word, uh, I, they've been swimming, mm. let me put it that way. You, you know, you segued quite nicely into something that I really wanted to talk to you about, which is your work with the kids of uh, the North Fork out of the Little Red Schoolhouse and whatnot. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the programs that you've run and, and what got you into that work and, to begin with? So... It became clear to my partner, Meg Bennett, and I early on in 2010 that we had the time and the energy and the commitment of the village of Greenport to utilize the Little Red Schoolhouse next to Aldo's. Many people know Aldo's, the best biscotti in the world. Oh, of course we do. Uh, and uh, great Italian Someone coffee. Someone said he is retiring. Aldo, I can't speak for Aldo, but you I saw him the other Aldo. day. He looked like he should have retired 20 years ago. <laughs> I know that. Sorry, Aldo, just no, kidding. We, we, know that, we know that he there is laughing. Free biscotti. Yeah, we know he's laughing along with us. Of course, <laughs> or sharpening his knives. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so we started a program with kids that are now. So here's the, here's, here's the ramifications of the program. We meet together every Saturday morning and kind of made up a hodgepodge. In the Little uh, Red Schoolhouse? In the Little Red Schoolhouse. Okay. The Village of Greenport was kind enough to let us use it. We established a, a 501c3 called Glory Going Green, which is a, a tax-deductible uh, uh, educational foundation so that we could uh, collect money and give money away. Many of the children who we started with when they were 10 years old, uh, one of our prime students is Annabelle O'Dell, who graduated last year as Valor Victorian from Greenport, is in her first semester at Barnard. There's Joe McGinnis, who got a full ride to Dartmouth. Full ride to Dartmouth, also graduated salutatorian. His sister, Emily McGinnis, Beautiful. who graduated uh, as Valor Victorian from Greenport, who got also a full ride to Dartmouth. See, now kids, if you're seeing a pattern here, maybe you should get involved with some of these programs with Dave. Unfortunately, that program ended at a certain point, but we oh. have working relationships now with the Greenport School with uh, Brandy Hopkins and uh, who's the guidance counselor. And now we, uh, we give scholarship money out to five or six or seven um, deserving Mostly C students, because I was a C student in college. Uh, the A students will always manage. God bless them. The C students, kind of like me, kind of fump for a long. And I they need love a little, that. They need a little push, you know what I'm you saying? You know, I, that's the first time, I, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of programs out there like it, but that's the first time I'm hearing of one, and I think that's so, so great. I don't encourage people to be C students. <laughs> no. No. It's just the way some of us are. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, I didn't really get my grades until I went to college. Right. Uh, in, in in high school, I was very, uh, I fluctuated quite a bit uh, based on interest. All right, so we, we, we're talking North Fork. We'll hear uh, the, the original track now, and then we'll talk to Kim a bit about uh, his extracurriculars outside of uh, musicianship. And then we'll talk, we'll... Continue talking. We'll do Shuck and Jive a little later on. So uh, tell us about this track. So I have a friend in Greenport named uh, Blind Lemon Pledge. And Blind Lemon has been living out in Greenport for a very long time. And occasionally he calls me up and, you know, there's like uh, uh, the phone rings and then there's like silence on the other end for like 10 minutes because he's trying to remember who the heck he's calling because he forgets. So he called me up the other day and he said, uh, listen, I, 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 I wrote a song. I'm kind of quoting him. I wrote a song. He speaks very hesitantly. And I, I said, that's great, Blind Lemon. I, we're actually, we're going on the radio. And he said, well, I'd, I'd like you to sing my song. So he just got me the words this morning. I'm, I'm a little ashamed of this. Kim and I play a lot together and we pride ourselves in in our hard drives, memorizing things. We never play with music or words in front of us. But Blind Lemon was a little late to the party, so he just got me the words this morning. So this might sound 
unprofessional and unrehearsed because it's kind of not un, it is unprofessional and unrehearsed but I just a shout out to Blind Lemon Pledge to let him I don't even know if he has a radio <laughs> Uh, he might just be on AM for all I know. But we're going to sing a song. Blind Lemon's been living out here a long time. And he wrote uh, a blues uh, uh, that he calls uh, the North Fork Blues. Okay. Uh, he, the blues are traditionally in, in E. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, I can do that. They, uh, right, because we haven't done this. So for anybody listening, uh, I apologize for every mistake you're going to hear me make. <laughs> I'm leaving the North Fork Riding that old westbound train Well, I'm leaving the North Fork Riding that westbound train Boys living on the East End Making me so crazy, I'm just driving me insane. Used to be so easy when the rent was awfully cheap. Remember them days, rent was cheap. <laughs> well, it used to be so easy when the rent was awfully cheap. Well, the rent got so high, you know, all I could do is cry. Baby, cry and I weep. So let me tell you what I do. I says to my landlord, please don't raise my fee. I said, please, landlord. Please don't raise my fee. My landlord just grinned. He said, boy, <laughs> you must be kidding me. Play on, Mr. Kim. that bass, brother. work all that I could bear my rent so high will I work all that I could bear wait you hear the next line a little blind pledge La blind lemon wrote this line I said Fred, ah. he said there's hardly a space for my bed and hardly a space for my chair in my room now here comes get to the end I'm saying Well I tried living in a tent But the weather got so bad it was so bad Well I tried living in a tent But the weather got so bad It was bad Kim it was really bad well, I got sick as a dog The worst fever I most ever had Just one more verse You know, I got a job washing dishes Work eight hours every day My hands are in the sink Using palm olive liquid Well, I got a job washing dishes 
Working eight hours every day. Well, you know I'm making good dough, but it still ain't enough, Lord, for my rent to pay. So I'm leaving the North Fork, catching the Long Island West Westbound train, all aboard. Well, I'm leaving the North Fork. Catching that Long Island westbound train. Well, if I ever win the lottery, Lord. Woo-hoo, Lord. I said, if I ever win the lottery, Lord. Yeah. If I ever win the lottery, Lord. Well, I'll come back here again. Thank you, Blind Lemon. Captain Dave Burson and Kim Tetro, the one and only Shuck and Jive here on WLIWFM's special Studio 51 session as we ask for donations uh, to WLIWFM.org or by phone at 800-262-0717. Help support performances and conversations like these Leaving the North Fork Blues, I'm sure we all can uh, relate, especially when it comes to uh, the rent being too dang high. It's time to turn our attention to our second North Fork treasure, Kim Tetro, the creator of the SPAT program, which has helped, what now, 250 families? Are, are... Oh no, we're, we're way past that. Where are we now? Uh, well... You know, we've been doing the program. We're going into our twenty-third year, so almost as long as uh, Captain Dave has been running Glory Going Green. Yeah, I've been I've been at Cornell for uh, going on twenty-eight years. Well, and you told me the story about how you were in South Hold before you went to get your yeah, master's, yeah, and it's so bizarre. Oh, Dave, it's a good thing we're oh, not at the opera. Which you know what. I'm going to take the fault for that because Brian whispered in my ear right before we went on the air, cell phone's off. Cell phone. I had my cell phone off all night just thinking about it. <laughs> just thinking about it. So, so, uh, so tell us a story. Uh, what, which, about, about ab- how oh, you, oh, you started. Know, it was like a very is, full yeah, circle story. Yeah, it is. It's funny because I came out to the North Fork for the first time. After graduating college at Connecticut College, I bought a sailboat and brought it over to Kutchog in 1984. And that's the first time I really had ever been on the North Fork. And uh, what was really interesting about that is that I was, uh, I was clamming in, uh, in, in Broadwater Cove in Kutchog, 1984, And I'm looking around and I'm saying, look at how beautiful this place is. Amen. But look at the color of the water. It's like (laughs) mocha. Oh, because of the the algal And all of a sudden, something like bounced out of the water and nipped me in the butt. And it's like, what was that? It was a scallop, 1984 in Broadwater Cove, beginning of brown tide. And, you know, it was was really going to be about the last time that scallops were going to be there for a while. And uh, just very, very interesting, the the full circle being that I, you know, I came out, I worked, uh, I I worked the uh, different trades on the North Fork and really, and lived there for five years until I made some money and got an opportunity to put myself through grad school. So I went to Rhode Island in in 1988 and lived there for five years and the first more than that i guess 1988 the first job i got after grad school was at cornell cooperative extension in southall and i never thought and and it was to bring scallops back to the Peconic after brown tide it's amazing which was talk about full circle yeah uh, you know how when you're a kid and maybe you lived in a place and you have dreams about this old house you used to live in right 
and you that never the go back. Port. Well, right. that's what I would have, but I went back, and I've been back since 1995, and just bought a place in Southhold, and I never want to leave. I was telling Dave, you know, how I never even go as far as Riverhead anymore. <laughs> Uh, but this is so my this second is time. Special. This is my second time in Southampton this week because there was a Southampton town meeting yesterday that I attended, where they're going to open up town waters for aquaculture. And you know, we I've got a very good relationship with the town of Southampton. I've been working with them for a long, long time, and the trustees and every. It, this is such a special place. You know, if anybody lives on the North or South Fork and doesn't wake up every morning saying, this is the most incredible place. I wake up every morning. I love this. And it's the most incredible place. And, and I happen to have a very quirky life that allows me, I was telling Dave this morning. With the red if hats. You can't, if you the- can't <laughs> wring every drop out of this place, the joy, then you should just move to Bayonne. <laughs> And 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 so what happened with Spat, you know, oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, if anyone's it's from very- Bayonne, please donate to this radio <laughs> yes. station W-L-I-W-F-M. because, you know, W-L-I-W-F-M.org or absolute, call and if you're a Spat member and you're listening, please, if you didn't already spend all your money on us, go right. donate to, to this wonderful radio station. Wait, so, you know, you, you, you were brought here to bring back the Bay Scallop, and it seems like we we need to be doing that again. I was speaking to Chris uh, P- Paparo. I always say his name wrong, Paparo, about um, you know they were talking about the recent yeah. you know total devastation, yeah. Yeah. and he was saying uh, it's really it's the 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 warming of the waters is the big one, and I said well I got to talk to Kim and see well, if he's you know is- what's so interesting about what when I was brought in for scallops. There wasn't there. They had done a study of the Peconic Bay, and they found four living scallops Stop in the it. entire bay. Okay, <laughs> so it was a wipeout, and that's because brown tide, uh, which is an algae, uh, basically was killing larvae, shellfish larvae. Oh, the bugs! And them well, out. not even they never even got they to be bugs. They weren't even bugs. So the thing with a scallop is eighteen month life cycle. If you get all of the larvae dying in one year, you might get a chance to get something back the next year, but it's pretty slim. If you get two years of that, it's right. the nail in the coffin, and we had eight, nine years of it. So there was it was a, 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 a pan bay extinction of of our bay scallop, so it needed a hundred percent restoration. And it took a long time, and f- from some good support and good funding, uh, we we created the largest scallop restoration project and ever. And could you talk a little bit about about that model and how how it worked and the way you know? Well, it, you know, we 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 glommed on to uh, I guess it was uh, Southampton Co- uh, College uh, professor Steve Tuttleback who came up with the idea that if you wanted to bring scallops back, because we were doing a lot of culturing scallops and putting and them seeding, out, put a, right. kind of a, 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 a reseeding and, a, and a, 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 an enhancement program. And it was not really working as well as, as, as it needed to. So his model was to uh, mimic the entire brood population of the bay in containment. And so that's what we did. We wrote a proposal that was going to house a half a million scallops in containment in one location as a huge spawner sanctuary that was going to spawn every spring and fall and fuel the entire bay system. And that worked. And uh, we, we it was a four-year project uh, in 2000, and we're still working on that project and getting kind of uh, maintenance survival money to keep that going. Now, and and it came back and people were scalloping and it was a big hurrah. And then the last three and going on four years, a meltdown. But Mm -hmm. there's a difference. And here's what a lot of people don't understand about the new thing that's going on with scallops that is the difference. Scallops are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing right now, except for one thing. 
they don't have an 18-month life cycle. They've got a 16-month life cycle. They're dying before us lizard-brained humans can eat them. But they're in, they're, they're recruiting into the environment. Every year they're spawning. The bugs are taking. The bugs are surviving the winter. They grow up the next season into adults and just getting ready for opening day. They die a couple months early. Oh, no. So it's, it, 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 there, there's elements to what we're looking at to, uh, to, to deal with that. And one of them is going to be the potential for scallops to, uh, through maybe selective breeding, right. to acclimate to what's going on. Water temperature in the marine system is always going to be an issue. And we don't understand the just the smallest amount of changes in a marine system that are set in a range over hundreds of thousands of years to change that quickly uh it, it, it it's very hard for organisms to acclimate to, it, to adapt what would be called quantum evolution the the ability to to uh adjust to that not over long periods of time but instantly which can happen and and we're looking at it uh you know, I'm told that scallops are only forty-five dollars a pound this year, so maybe it's a little better of a season than it's. But but then, it's frustrating being because able to, uh, than not being able to find them at all. Uh, you know, I've been I've been growing shellfish for thirty-one years now. Scallops are They're my more best difficult. friend and my worst. It, and, Nightmare. And, 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 and as far as spat is concerned, uh, you don't do the, the scallops. You're doing uh, clams well, well, instead we, because we they're, are working they're on more, it. And oh, we're, gonna ra- we're going to ramp up on it this year. Oh, the cool. reason why we don't do it as a matter of course, there's a couple of reasons. We, when we get our permits for everybody, it's for oysters. So right. we'll, we'll, uh, we can adjust that if we start growing scallops. I said clams, by the way. That was my mistake. Uh, oysters are, oh, yeah. are no, it's, easier it's to good. grow than scallops. All of them are important species. All are but, bivalves. But, but what's interesting <laughs> about scallops is that if I was doing a community shellfish gardening program for scallops, I'd have like two members and they would be really angry all the time because scallops are just so so precarious all the time they just everything wants to take them down at at certain stages and so we're you know after all these years i'm still learning all kinds of things but there's a new resurgence in interest in the live in shells scallop trade and if we can get that really booming that can be a, a game changer so we'll, we'll 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 look at that i believe the website is cce suffolk.edu for more information yeah, as yeah, far as that is concerned yeah, cce cornell cooperative extension if you basically google cce suffolk you're going to get a big website and we're marine it's a it's a it's the largest cooperative extension in new york suffolk uh, we have it's a big organization it's it's five divisions i'm in the marine division the in my opinion, the best division. So, so we've, we've only got four minutes before the NPR news break. So I'm going to let you guys play into the NPR news break. We will have you both back here in WLI WFM Studio 51. See them at the Rams head, uh, Shuck and Jive, Kim Tetro and Captain Dave Burson, the creator of SPAT and the captain of Glory Going Green. I'm Gianna Volpe and you, whoever you are out there, thank you so much for your donations to support conversations and performances like these at WLIWFM.org or call 800-262-0717. Take it away, guys. I think you got a sea shanty for us. We do. And Gianna, you could inform your audience that Kim and I will be delighted for a, a, a certain donation that's more than $5 to come to people's homes and entertain them for, depending on what the donation is, from five minutes to five well, two years. hours. <laughs> <laughs> if you could handle that. <laughs> and converse about oysters. Okay, don't converse now. Play right. music. And we're going to play an old sea shanty called Whoop Jamboree. It's a short haul shanty. Kim and I are both professional mariners back in the day. I'm talking about schooners, big boats, oceans.
Oh, the pilot, he looks out ahead Hands on the chain and the heaving of the lead The old man roars to wake the dead Come and get your ropes, me son Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree It's a long tail sailor man coming up behind me Jamboree, whoop, jamboree Come and get your ropes, me son Whoop, jamboree, whoop Jamboree, it's a long tail sailor man coming up behind me. Jamboree, whoop, jamboree, come and get your roads, me son. Oh, the pilot, he looks out ahead, and he's on the chain and a heaving of the lead. The old man roars to wake the dead. Come and get your roads, me son. Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree, it's a long tail sailor man coming up behind me. Jamboree, whoop, jamboree, come and get your ropes, me son. Whoa, now we're at that lizard light. Show me, boys, I'll heave into sight. Show me a brush to the Isle of Wight. Come and get your ropes, me son. Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree, it's a long tail sailor coming. Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree, come and get your ropes, please. Play on, kid. The pretty young girls come out in flocks With long tail skirts and short-legged frocks Come and get your roads, me son Whoop! Jamboree, whoop! Jamboree, it's a long tail sailor Jamboree, whoop! Jamboree, come and get your roads, me son Oh, now we're at that limehouse way A pretty young girls come out to say We'll not sign on for another day Come and get your roads, please.